Well, hello everybody, welcome back. I'm really glad you could join me once again. So I'm back home in Edinburgh after a wonderful few days at the Pennycook Estate. I'm really glad that so many of you enjoyed seeing that beautiful heavenly place. We had the most lovely time there and I just feel so rejuvenated and rested again. It is the 1st of November today. I'm kind of glad that Halloween is out the way, even though I do really enjoy Halloween. But I'm just so excited for Christmas this year and I know that once Halloween disappears, in America you also have Thanksgiving coming up, but once Halloween is over, this festive period really does begin. And yesterday I was walking around town and a lot of the local stores and businesses have put up their Christmas decorations, which feels so early, but I guess they have to maximise on this time of year because throughout the rest of the year I can imagine it can be quite difficult so Christmas is a real boost for everyone. I've also seen a few houses around here in the new town with the Christmas trees and decorations up already. A little bit too early I think but if you're feeling the spirit why not? For me I'm going to wait until December the 1st to put up my decorations. That feels the perfect time. I don't like to do them too early because otherwise by the time you get to Christmas Day it kind of feels a little bit fatigued and like you're not really that interested. I like to keep the interest going and I like to really enjoy my tree for those few weeks and then that is just enough for me. So I am going to show you something really interesting. I think you'll find it interesting. Um, it was delivered here yesterday by my good friend Jonathan Fremantle, who is an incredible artist. You may have seen that he painted my Green Man uh, canvas, which is just on the wall over there. And I've also bought a few other pieces from him. But about six months ago, we were chatting over a drink and he was saying that he was really wanting to do a portrait. Jonathan mostly does landscapes and abstract pieces. He does a bit of sculpture. But about w once a year, he will do a special portrait. And so he asked me if I would like to have my portrait painted. And I thought about it for a while, and I thought, wow, it's kind of a little bit of a self-indulgence and a little bit vain to have a portrait of yourself at home. But he kind of talked me around to the idea, basically because what he said was, you know, in this day of social media where all of our photographs are digital, lots and lots of photographs are getting lost. And he's so right. I can't tell you the amount of photos that I've taken over the last 10 years on my iPhone, where at the moment, at the time, it was a very special photograph. But then because it's just stored on a computer or on a phone, and maybe you see it for a little while, you kind of, it kind of loses that special appeal. Whereas before we had digital photographs, everybody used to have to print them out. They'd put them into a frame or a beautiful album and you'd get them out every few years and look through them. And I think that is the only sad thing about uh, technology today with photographs is that because we get to see them constantly and we can take a picture instantly and, and see what it looks like, we lose that special thing. So a portrait is a really great way to capture a moment in time and keep it as something very, very special. And it kind of goes back to the days before photography in the Georgian period and beyond when people commissioned a portrait because that is the only remembrance they're going to have of a person or a moment. And I think we're kind of going full circle back to that in many ways because our photographs are becoming so uh, normalised and so everywhere that they're becoming less special. So I also thought that it would be very nice to have a portrait with Sophie in it. It's a very sad thing to say, but I can see she's getting old all the time. She's got this issue with her lungs so that when she's walking, she's got this cough. She's actually going to the vet this afternoon. And I just thought, if she has three years, five years, there's not that much time left with my darling baby girl. So it would be nice for us to have a portrait together that I will be able to look at and just love for the rest of my life. So Jonathan 
ha painted my portrait. We started it back in the summer in May and it was completed yesterday. So he delivered it yesterday and I think it's pretty cool and quite special. So I'm going to show you now before I keep talking on and on and on. So come through to the dining room with me and I will show you the portrait. So here we have it. It is quite enormous. It's, it's a full-size portrait of me and I'm standing in the window in the sitting room through there and then Sophie is by my feet and I think Jonathan has done the most amazing job of capturing a little glint in my eye and what he said was he wanted to create a portrait that showed who I was um, offline. So my life is very much online every week making videos for all of you, my audience and my friends. But he said that um, he wanted to create a portrait where perhaps only close friends or family would recognize this expression and this little glint in my eye. And I think that is quite a special thing just to keep something back and keep something a little bit elusive. And I can definitely see that look in my eye. And then we have Sophie here by my feet. And the wonderful thing about this is that it's completely natural. So the very, very first thing that we did to start this portrait was take a series of photographs. And I stood in the window like this and Sophie just came walking over and sat right there by my feet. And that is something that she's done her whole life. She's a very close little dog who loves companionship and whatever I'm doing in the house, whether I'm doing a little bit of laundry, doing a little bit of cooking, whether I go and take a shower, she always follows me from room to room and wants to be close. And I just think that is so sweet and so cute. So she's there in a natural position and now she's immortalized in this painting of us together. And I just, ah, oh, I'm trying not to get too emotional about it, but I look at her face, he's captured her so well. I can see her funny little spirit, her loving little spirit. And I just know that when she's gone one day, I'll be able to look at this painting and just remember her for ever and remember all the lovely memories that we've had over the years. So I am really delighted with the portrait. And I just thought that it was the perfect spot to hang it on the wall in the dining room, something a little bit more grand and formal. Um, and it just gives another architectural dimension to this room because this wall was completely bare and empty before and it sits opposite the window so it kind of gives architectural structure as well you've got the wood panelling of the window here and it just creates this big impact I think now Jonathan was the one who suggested that we do a full length portrait and it to be honest, it really scared me because I thought, wow, people are going to come into my house and think that I am the most vain, self-indulgent person in the world. But he said, look, go big or go home. Do it, do it may have a big impact. Let's do something really fun. And I'm glad that we did because it is quite, it is a little bit self-indulgent and it is maybe a little bit vain to some people. But I just think that it's nice to capture, again, a moment in time I'm 35 next year, I'm going to start to age, and we've captured a youthful moment where I feel kind of like I'm in the prime of my life at the minute in terms of I'm very, very happy, I'm very content. So I will always look back on this portrait, whatever happens in my life, and I'll be able to say, wow, that was a really amazing time. I was young, I had some amazing friends, I was in a great relationship, I felt really content with my work. I was living in a beautiful home that I loved. So it's a great moment for me to capture with my little Sophie. And yes, I think Jonathan has done the most amazing job. And one of the things about Jonathan, because he rarely does portraits, is that a lot of people don't even know that he has this amazing talent for portraiture. So yes, I wanted to share it with you because he really is a very gifted artist in all senses. So now I have three works by Jonathan. I have this one, the portrait. I have the green man mask. And I also have 
This little uh, still life of um, a flower in a vase, Jonathan does a thing called the daily studies where he paints a picture every single day. It's always the same size and he sells them for £300 each every single day, which I think is a very big commitment to your art and to your talent. So yeah, that is my painting. I really am excited to show you. People are going to probably kill me online for having a portrait of myself, but I think it's a nice thing to do, again, for all the reasons that I said before, and I really like the way that it looks in this room. So do let me know what you think. I'll be very interested to hear. But for me, I'm just so glad that I've captured Sophie for the rest of my life, and I get to have her here with me always. Well, good morning, everybody. It is Sunday, just after 10 and I'm heading to Nathan's house. So I believe he's got some white plates that he wants to hang on the wall and he needs my help. So we're gonna go there and do that. I think this might be the first time that you've seen Nathan's apartment. Um, so yeah, we'll go in and have a look. It's really beautiful. So we're just coming out of the, uh, I have a back entrance to my apartment, which is around there. Where, where you park the car. And it's literally a five minute walk to Nathan's apartment. So that's good. Sophie's having her first morning walk. So I'm just here at Nathan's house. We are going to be hanging some beautiful white plates on the wall. I will show the inspiration for that. Nathan's apartment is really beautiful and I'm gonna help him hang these plates. I've never done this before. So we're going to just do our best and uh, once we've hung them up, I will show you this room because it is absolutely stunning. All of the decorations are done for Christmas, so I'm going to show you that. And yes, we're going to have a nice morning. It's Sunday, very relaxing, no, ch no stress, just some nice decorating. And all about enjoying now with Dale. Yes. If it's a mistake, we can start again. It's exactly. not a problem. It's not end of the world. It's not. No. That's the way you have to approach these things. Just enjoy it. And practice makes perfect. Practice makes perfect. <laughs> so first things first, we're going to have a lovely cup of tea before we get started. That always gets you in the mood to do some nice complicated work and gives you a little bit of refreshment before so. So what I decided to do, I thought the easiest way was to find a large scroll of wrapping paper position the plates where Nathan would like them, and then draw round every single plate, and then the little yellow hooks that are gonna be stuck on the back of the plate, we can put those in position on top of the markings, and then cut them out and place the whole thing on the wall. So this sounds very, very complicated, but it's super easy. If we can do it, anybody can do it. And I just thought this was the most precise way of doing this, because if you want to hang all of these pictures in a beautiful way that it looks symmetrical and orderly, you need to have a proper plan. <laughs> So it seems very long-winded, but I think this is the best way of doing it. So I'm just pressing down on the plate now so that I can see the inside rim where the actual yellow hanging needs to go, and then I'm just cutting out the circle, and then we'll put this on the wall and be able to know exactly where to place the hooks. Seems complicated, right? So this is the process that we've come up with to hang the plates in a beautiful way. So this might be completely the most long-winded way of doing it, but I, I'm not very a very technical person, neither of us are. So this is the best way I can think of. So we've got this little piece of paper. We've outlined all of the plates with a pencil. Then we have positioned where the yellow sticky pad should go on there. What I'm gonna do now is hang the piece of paper on the wall, make sure that it's all straight and in line, and then, <laughs> On the wall, I'm going to draw around these holes with a pencil, and then we can stick them onto the wall so that it will look exactly in the right position. I think that is the best way of doing it. I'm not sure, but we will see if it works. I think it will. When you're a creative person, you need a man, a man who is really adept at doing DIY because this is not what we do but we'll see if it works. Now we are sticking the paper to the wall. 
and I think this will work, hopefully. Then we're gonna mark in those holes and this should be a success, I think. I'm excited. That I've drawn around the holes on the paper, we're just putting the nails slightly above the circle so that they will all hang. And I, I think that I think this is going to work really well, actually. And I'm so impressed that we've managed to do it. Now we're going to hang the plates. It's the moment of truth. They've got these sticky things on the back. We've let them sit like that for about an hour to let them stick. And now we're going to hang and hopefully this will work very well. There we go. I think this is going to look great once it's all done. Are you excited? <laughs> I am very excited. Can't wait to do everything. Camera. I know. Me. And there we have the finished result. Actually, it's not finished because there are four more plates to go on, but we run out of the wall hooks. So we're gonna to wait to get some more from Amazon and then we will hang the rest of them on to widen it out a little bit. But I think it looks really great, lovely, very beautiful. Do you think I should add the two? Yeah, definitely add those in there. One here, and one here, and one here. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yes. Looks fab. I wanted to show you Nathan's new chair that he got from an antique store. We're actually going to go to the same store now and buy the other one because there were a pair. So he's going to get the next one as well. And his plan is to have the wood painted and he's got a selection of fabrics. He's gonna go for this one, for the, the actual chair and for the piping. Now look at this amazing fabric from Samuel and Sons. So Nathan is gonna have this upholstered on Peggy's bed and he's going to get someone to stitch over the eye because Peggy only has one eye. So he's gonna get someone to stitch over that. And so it will be Peggy's bed with her little fabric on. Isn't that sweet? So I really do love these gorgeous French chairs with the little caster wheels on them. And when they're real pulsive, they're going to look fabulous. Really fabulous. So this is Nathan's very exquisite apartment, which I am in love with. He's got the best taste. And because he's got such incredible architecture, the room is just so beautiful. So the best thing, I think, are the amazing sash windows and the very tall ceilings. And his decor and taste is just out of this world. He's got the best taste. So the Christmas tree is up. It looks beautiful, very elegant and chic. And with all of these creamy white tones, I just think this is the most beautiful room. I think Nathan's apartment is the, my favorite in Edinburgh. And I know some beautiful houses here, but this is definitely my favorite. And now with the new plate wall, it's looking smashing. So beautiful. And actually, it just proves that you don't have to have very, very expensive decor to create a high impact. You can buy a collection of plates like that from charity shops or maybe just a store like TK Maxx and make a high impact, beautiful decor piece of art. And it really is effective. With these high ceilings, you need to fill out the walls with art. And uh, that's a great way of doing it. So yeah, this is the room and I just love this room. It's so, so pretty and so beautiful. So Nathan, I think you said that you're gonna reupholster your sofa soon. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what to say, but thank you so much for your kind word. And it took me about nearly two years to try to get everything coming in play. 
But I've always said, um, when you try to do everything in one go, but then you might regret it because you're thinking, oh, it doesn't look right, it doesn't work for that corner, it's okay to take your time. And by one thing at a time, at everything coming together, you know. So that's why today, me and Nicola would help to sort out the wall play, and I got the anti chair rigidly, so everything coming together. Now I'm looking forward to see everything finished. It's and beautiful. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Different. Looks fab. So I'm just home from Nathan's. We had a lovely morning hanging up those plates on the wall. I always love doing things in the house and really learning something new. And it just shows that when you put your mind to something, you can find a solution. I am hopeless at hanging things. I always try to get somebody in to help me, but we did that all by ourselves. So after that, we just nipped to the antique pop-up store, which is just in town at the moment. Nathan picked up his other chair and I bought this beautiful vintage uh, kind of vase, which is an old sugar vase. And after staying at uh, the Penny Cook Estate last week, they had lovely old things like this in the kitchen. And so I'm going to put all of my wooden spoons in this and I think it will look really lovely in the kitchen. So I'm very happy with my little purchase. It was really worthwhile. A Sunday of hanging pictures and shopping for antiques. What could be nicer than that? So before I leave, I wanted to share some very exciting news with you all. Now, you may have noticed over the last nine, 10 months that uh, my online store has been inactive. I've had quite a lot of emails from people who've been trying to buy candles, napkins, diffusers, and my Nicholas Fairford tea, that uh, the shop isn't online and when is it gonna be coming back? So we ran out of stock at the beginning of the year and I was trying to decide what to do. And because I did have a lot of questions and a lot of people inquiring, I've decided to restock all of the stock. So that is now back online. Everything has been restocked, so the candles, diffusers, the napkins. But I want to let you know that once this uh, run of stock has been sold, I'm not going to be bringing any of it back. I've been thinking for quite some time what to do about the stock, because um, if I'm going to do it, it's going to be all by myself, me packing all the orders, sending them out, and at this point, I don't really have the time with all of the traveling and everything else that I'm working on. I'm now working at the Chateau as well. So this will be, once this stock has sold, I'm not gonna be renewing it. So if you do love the product, which I do, by the way, then I would say this is a great chance to maybe stock up on a few things that you like so that you have a supply of them when they're no longer here. So that is the exciting news. The product is back and what's even better is that there is 15% off everything. You don't need to enter any code on the online store. You just pop it into the basket and when you check out, 15% will be deducted from the total, which is a pretty nice saving, especially before Christmas. So if you would like to purchase the Nicholas Fairford product, you'll get 15% off great time of year to do that because Christmas is coming perhaps you want to buy some lovely Christmas gifts and this I would say is kind of like limited edition product now because once it's all sold I'm not going to be bringing it back so yes please do check out the online store at nicholasfairford.com we have my beautiful botanica candle the diffuser the lovely linen napkins and some beautiful Nicholas Fairford tea. So tomorrow, very early in the morning, I'm going to Vienna with Nathan. The taxi is coming to pick us up at 5.30 in the morning and our flight is at 6.40. So we're gonna be in Vienna quite early. I'm very excited to share that trip with you. I'm gonna pack after I finish filming this video. So when we get there, I will show you everything that I've packed. I've had some new clothes that I want to share. So I'll show you my new clothes 
and I will show you the hotel, I will show you the whole trip around Vienna. It's going to be really exciting, it's very close to Christmas and Vienna always feels so chic at this time of the year. So I'm really looking forward to doing that and sharing it next time. You may notice that I've started to do two videos per week. That is because, as I mentioned before, I'm now able to edit much quicker because of my new laptop. So I'm aiming to do new videos every Sunday and Wednesday and I'm really, really enjoying doing that. So I think the next video will be this Wednesday of my trip to Vienna and I'm really looking forward to sharing it with you all. So have a lovely rest of your weekend, have a great week next week and I will see you next time. And don't forget if you would like to buy any of the Nicholas Fairford product, it's 15% off everything at nicholasfairford.com. Take care everyone, see you soon, bye bye.